shyness, uh, nerves, which, and I suppose that shyness and nerves are in fact uh, the ultimate in, in vanity. Because they, it, if one is shy, it, it assumes that someone is looking and listening and caring and giving a damn. But in fact, probably nobody is, uh, is either looking or listening <laughs> or caring or giving a damn. That's a very good way to think of it. Yes. It's best illustrated by a, uh, uh, a very eminent uh, English theatrical producer who was pathologically shy. Uh, and he would refuse to go to any parties. He was invited to a country house, a rather grand country house, and all his friends persuaded him to go, and he finally went, and during dinner did all the wrong things. He, he passed the salt and dropped it in the soup, and, and uh, taken to bed that night, uh, he hadn't got the nerve to ask the butler where the lavatory was. The and bathroom, he, we say here. The bathroom. <laughs> well, it wasn't a bath he needed, actually. No. Um, <laughs> uh, and, um, it wasn't to lave himself, either. No. <laughs> and during the course of the night, he uh, wanted to go to the bathroom. And uh, uh, not knowing where it was, he didn't even know where the light switch was. And so he was stumbling around, and he knocked over what he assumed was a, a carafe of water. And, oh dear, done it again. He went puttering down the hall, trying to find a, a light switch. He found the light switch, switched it on, and all over a, a, a 17th century fresco were inky hands. <laughs> He'd knocked over an inkwell. Uh, <laughs> so he went back into his bedroom, packed a bag at three o'clock in the morning, and left. <laughs> <laughs> and then his friend said, you, no, you must go back and explain this. It can happen to anybody. And, and he's a very reasonable man, and he'll understand. Uh, it was about three months later, he did, in fact, go back to the country house and uh, knocked on the door. And there was that formidable butler again. And he said, can I see Colonel breech-loading staircase, whatever his name was. Isn't it? <laughs> and uh, he said, yes, sir, do go into the gun room. <laughs> so he went into the gun room, and there was a large chair, and he lowered himself into the large chair, and on the large chair was a poodle which he sat on <laughs> and killed. <laughs> so he left again. <laughs> and the, the poor colonel arrived to find a mangled poodle <laughs> and no explanations. And, and, that, and that's how you feel tonight? That's how I feel. Oh, I see. <laughs> There isn't a poodle I, on this chair. Well, I, I was going to say something. <laughs>